Okay, YouTube, as promised in my last video, I want to do a, a quick one about uh, some custom Harmony Hub, Harmony Remote functionality I've built in uh, to it using a Arduino, basically IR to IP bridge that I've built um, to, in order to relay custom IR codes that I've programmed into the Harmony Hub um, to the Arduino, receive it via, like, for example, one of these uh, IR receivers receive that command and relay um, those IR commands out and over to a Raspberry Pi that's running PHP. Uh, I find it a lot easier to run uh, in PHP for that type of purpose and map those IR codes that the Arduino relays to the Raspberry Pi to IP calls and let the Raspberry Pi then make those IP calls to various things within my home automation system to control them. And it works pretty nice and pretty cool. I wanted to show you that. A little bit of background. The reason I got a Harmony Hub in the first place is I wanted to be able to uh, control my TV uh, by turning it on. You know, it sounds kind of funny, but I have, as if you've seen some of the other videos, you know I have IP control for the TV, for the Pioneer receiver, for the DVR. That's all fine and dandy, but the one thing I didn't mention or the big caveat is, is with the TV is there's no way to control the TV via IP control once the TV's turned off. There's no standby mode, especially with these Samsung models. So once the TV's off, I can't use home automation um, in an automated fashion to get the darn TV turned back on. Uh, that's problematic. I looked at lots of solutions, HDMI, SEC control, things like that. Didn't work very well, CEC control. Um, finally settled on using a Harmony Hub. Said, hey, if I can interface with this Harmony Hub and via IP control, and then via the IP commands, tell it to issue IR codes. That IR code that can be issued is one to turn the TV on. And now I can now I'm in now I'm in now I'm in the game, if you will. That I can turn the TV on, do other things like that, and get started with home automation for my media center um, with that one glaring lack of functionality that I had of just getting started in the first place by turning the TV on. Exclusive sole purpose I bought this Harmony Hub for. I got it going, works great. Uh, and then as, as, as always works with these types of things, like, okay, now that I've got it, what else could I do with it? I quickly realized I'd want to probably want to pick up a remote. So I went ahead and picked up the cheap add on remote that you can add after the fact, um, and, and settled on, you know, obviously this is the entry level one and that's all fine and dandy. works cool. I ended up using it instead of my regular TV remote so that I could keep things in sequence, if you will, for the activities that are active and things like that. Now, with this remote, what it doesn't have compared to lots of the other ones is some uh, smart home button functionality for light control and things like that. This has none. So the only thing you can really do with this remote is tie lighting control uh, to activities. And so I can say start TV activity, push that center button, and then I can map. Uh, I have some Philips Hue lights and Z-Wave lights and things like that. And you can map those to then run, turn the lights on when that activity starts, turn them off when you shut that activity off. But... but Logically, what you're going to want to do then, what I quickly realized is nah, I'd like to have individual button control so that any of these buttons, I could do various smart home control functionality, whether it be lights or any darn thing else that I have on my network that I can control via IP, which is just about everything else from a home automation perspective. So I said, what's the best way to address that? Let's go ahead and build out that Arduino IR to IP bridge, and we could be off to the races. So we take this remote that comes with uh, um, this little receiver, and we, use, we go to the Harmony Hub and we have it learn all of these individual buttons. I quickly ran out of, uh, of buttons available for the things I wanted to do, so I took any other random remote no longer in use. Uh, had the hub learn those as well. I assigned all those to a new custom device that I call Arduino Remote, or Arduino Activity, if you will. It's an Arduino device. And I have that mapped to one of these activities where if I long press this activity, it turns on this remote into Arduino Remote. So the buttons then that I map within the Harmony software um, to any of these particular IR codes are sent via the Harmony Hub. My Arduino over there in my media center picks up those commands and relays them to my Raspberry Pi. Raspberry Pi has the map to various IP calls, and, and again, we're off to the races. So let's see, that in, let's see that in action, therefore, how it works. And this gives me the ability to take this remote and do any sort of IP control that I want, which was the goal all along. So let's start out with, we, we have these colored, colored buttons, right? Red, green, yellow, blue. Wouldn't it be cool if we could actually use those if you have LED uh, colored LED bulbs. I happen to have the, the hue ones for this purpose. If I could map those to those particular colors, well, that's exactly what we did. Now, when I push these buttons, what you can also see um, is down there where the Arduino is, I have a little green LED I put in place that when it receives a recognized code that we've programmed into the Harmony setup, um, 
it flashes green saying, yeah, this is the code I, I'm looking for. Because obviously it's getting bombarded with lots of different IR codes, most of which are not pertinent to this home automation control I'm building for this bridge with the Arduino. Those are ignored. And so it just acknowledges those that it knows it should do work on. So let's go ahead and push red. Push red and boom, we've got a Philips, we got a, a bloom light behind here, behind the chair, LED strips behind the TV as well as above the kitchen cabinet. So there's our red button. Let's go ahead and shut red off. Let's go to the next one. It's a little dark in here, sorry about that. Let's go green. There's green, green and green. Now let's go ahead and shut green back off. Now you'll see that green LED that I'm referring to since it's a valid known uh, um, command. There's green recognizing we shut green off. Let's go ahead and go yellow. There's yellow. Let's shut yellow off and go blue. And I'm Ohio State fans so saying go blue is, is blasphemy, so I didn't really mean that in that respect. Let's go ahead and shut that blue back off. Okay, so there's Philips Hue Control. I'm using the Few API, uh, PHP API on the Raspberry Pi that accepts and pairs with the actual real physical Hue Bridge um, to run those commands. Uh, what's some other cool stuff then that we can do? We can literally do anything we want now with this remote um, by, by um, mapping those commands. So here's my Nest. Nest API, I have channel up, channel down functionality that normally do in TV mode. Looks like the wife is home, sorry about that. That that can control the, the Nest. So page down, logically, channel down is gonna turn the Nest down. Turn it down again, channel down. Turn it up, channel up. So now I can control my Nest simply from my remote sitting at my couch. Um, pretty darn cool. What's well, some other things we can do? Obviously lighting control. Here, chip number three is my lamp light. Push three, and now that lamp light turns on, that's an old X10 module. So I've got X10 control. I have some legacy X10 through the house that I've slowly been replacing with Z-Wave, but if it works, no reason to replace it. It works real nice. How to interface with X10. I've got an Arduino elsewhere in the house that accepts those IP commands that are being called and relays that via firecracker module soldered up to it. This sends the appropriate house code and number uh, to control X10 lights. Let's go ahead and shut that back off. Go to number six. Here's the Z dimmable Z-Wave switch for the kitchen. S toggles it on, six. Toggles it back off. Now I can control using one through six all the various lights on this floor. Pretty cool. What about ceiling fan control? Seven, eight, nine on my remote. I have mapped the low, medium, high. Let's go high on my ceiling fan, number nine. And there's our ceiling fan coming on in high mode. We can go down to seven, turn it to low mode. I don't know if you heard that motor shift, taking it down low, go ahead and push zero, turn the ceiling fan completely back off. Now you can hear it shut off, you hear that remote off. So ceiling fan control. Now my ceiling fan is only controllable for the, 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 the actual blades with the remote. I don't have a switch, so I don't have the option to do a Z-Wave switch in the wall to control ceiling fan on, off, and speed. And so instead what I've done is taken the ceiling fan remote and soldered that up to my Arduino down here as well. Let's go ahead and turn it on like medium and you can see what happens. IR command is gonna be received, first green light. And then I don't know if you can make it out, there's a red light back there. Let's do it again. Green light, receive the IR code. Red light, and there's our relay that's triggered. Sending the command to the Arduino, to the ceiling fan remote, triggers the appropriate mode accordingly. So that's some of the cool stuff I've done. Okay, put opens my gate outside. Um, exit, opens my garage because I'm exiting the house. Things like that, pretty, pretty cool. Anyway, I thought you guys might be inspired by that. I thought some pretty cool stuff to extend the functionality of the Harmony remote for some things that are inherently not built into it, at least particularly with this particular remote, um, that you can achieve, and in my particular case, doing so with an Arduino, effectively an Arduino bridge, I like to call it, IR to IP bridge. Kind of cool, let me know if you have any questions. Hope you enjoyed the video. See you in the next one where I think I'll go through and show you guys custom uh, widgets, push notifications, mail delivery system that I have in place um, that I think is pretty cool and you guys will think it's pretty sharp. What's really cool is with it, again, it, it's all interfaced with when my mail is received uh, as well as retrieved with push notifications to the phone, updating widget statuses on the phone via uh, widgets I have on the home screen and things like that. It's pretty cool. Stay tuned. Hope you enjoyed the video. See you in the next one.